Hiya. Uh, you're not long off the training pitch. Um, one player that wasn't out there today was Neil Mope. I'm just wondering if there's an update on this issue. Yeah, there's a possible situation um, where I'll be leaving the club. There's nothing guaranteed yet, um, but he will be travelling over and seeing if that deal can happen. You were pretty open last week about the sort of budgetary restrictions coming towards the end of the window. Will, with the potential departure of Neil Mopé, does that mean you're more confident potentially bringing more players in? Not necessarily. I mean, it, you know, the money is absorbed into the club in different ways, so we'll have to wait and see. And it's not just money you understand, it's the availability at this late stage of the, the window. You know, who's out there? Who could be done? Who who might not be able to be done? That sort of thing. So, uh, but yeah, that'll be that'll be you know coming at us as it does sort of thing. When um, when we've got a chance to operate, we will. We're told Oriol Mangala's one of the players that potentially the move is getting closer towards. I presume you're not going to say too much because you don't want to jinx it. But how important would it be to sign a? I don't think my words can jinx it. <laughs> I'm not superstitious, but no, he's a, he's a player who, who's is making his way over. But there's still a lot to do with the, the details of any deal. Um, as there always is, of course. Um, but well, there's, there's got a chance of us um, uh, getting him over and, and seeing if that deal can be done. How important would it be to add a centre midfielder of his stature? I think it's important to add any players. You know, he's got a, a bit more know-how than the other signings we've brought in, having played in the Premier League a little bit more. Um, we'll see, but he's got to get here first, and we haven't got him here first. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, sorry. So we'll see if the deal gets done. Given the start you've had in, in the Premier League, how? Refreshing, is it, I suppose, to potentially bring in one or two new signings before, before the winning close? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we're we trying to be active. Um, you know, people sometimes forget that. and We've been as active as we could be with the signings and, you know, trying to bring in players who can operate immediately and, and also grow into the club and the league. Um, that's a big challenge. And uh, so we want them to do that. And obviously the players who've been here before, I'm super proud of everyone here, what they've given to the cause, that's for sure. And that remains, you know, they've given a lot over the last couple of seasons, the players who have been here, I mean. The added players coming in, we want them to get that feeling for the club and that attachment to the club and the same work ethic to go and deliver. I know you say every game is a big game, but considering the start of the season, how much of a relief would it be if you managed to score the first goal and sort of maybe take a different tempo? Yeah, I mean, it's not just every game's a big game, but we forget last season, we I think we had one point after five games. So, you know, it's... It's not, it's not new territory. Unfortunately, that is. Obviously, we don't design it like that, I can assure you. Um, but, you know, last season we had a tough start of the season. It, it can happen and you don't want it. Um, you know, and we had 11 v 11 on the last, first two games of last season, lost 1 0 and 4 0. You know, so they're reminders of the truth of the Premier League and how difficult it is. You have to be on, on your situation, on your, on your performance level, sorry, all the time. You know, and I think that's a reminder to all of us, you know, where you've got to be. Um, we didn't want that, as I said. But it's there and it's real. So now we've got to react on it and make sure we look at, look after ourselves in the next one. Thanks for Thank Stuart. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so because the international break is next, I just wonder how important it is to get a positive result this weekend to stop some of the uh, well the noise about it. Well, you want a positive result all the time. You know, we don't we don't deliberately make bad noise. You know, <laughs> bad news. Sorry, um, it's come our way from a couple of performances that have not been strong enough. So now it's correcting that and correcting the, the way that we're playing to go and win, of course. But, you know, it's, um, yeah, the noise around here has been around for a long time. So, we, do, we you know, we've been trying, working very hard to change the narrative and the feel, and it's difficult. And if you don't win games, that, of course, adds to it. You know, so it's our responsibility and my responsibility as manager to make sure we do turn the corner and change and, and get results, um, and along with performances. You know, there was a good sign the other night, albeit with all due respect, I said afterwards to Doncaster, you know, we, we, we should take care of business in that game on paper. We know it's not that easy. They pushed us really close in our last season at their place. And I thought we gave a very strong second half. And I reminded the players of the freedom that comes when you're playing like that to go and play and the fans go with you. And I said, but we have to be the start point. The fans have been there forever and they will be. So we have to start that process when they get behind the team and can, you know, smell a good performance and they can feel a good performance. And I think second half we did that, and now we've got to do it, like I said, with all due respect to Doncaster in the Premier League against Premier League outfit. But is it difficult to get the players to play with the freedom that you want when the pressure is... Yeah, of course, but the, the players here, you know, another thing we've spoken as a group about, they've had some incredibly pressurised situations here in the last two years, and before I was here. You know, I've been here, what, 20 months? Even before that. I mean, they've had some incredibly tough times and I, I couldn't be more proud of these players. They've been incredible at what they've given and now we've got to give more. That's just the demand of a footballer and that should be the demand, by the way. You know, whenever you think you've given enough, you haven't. There's always another step, there's always another game, there's always another performance that needs taken care of. That's what we've got to do, go and take care of ourselves. And Coleman and Garner came back. Are they 
okay? And is there anything on yeah, the yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, um, we're Shay and uh, <coughs> excuse me, Jimmy. We, had, we, you know, we had to monitor the minutes. Be careful. They've they've been kind of wanted to come back and been free to come back, but with not enough training really. So I was really pleased with their performances and how they went about it. Um, so that adds a bit more depth to us. Um, Jared's still a bit of time away. Yusef's obviously a bit of time away as well. And Pato's making sort of sensible strides back. We knew that would take a bit of time. And so we're still three three very strong players and very good players missing, um, and a couple who are, are nearing to full fitness, but not quite. I should go to Julia. Um, can I just ask, um, regarding outgoings, is there a cut-off that you and Kevin Thell have maybe decided, such as would they have to go today in order to be able to get replacements? Well, I mean, you do hear about last-minute deals. I've been involved in a couple myself down my years of management, but you prefer to get them done quicker, obviously, but it doesn't always work like that. So we'll be around and monitoring situations as, as far as we can, as long as we've got the finances to obviously put it in place. There's no point in sitting there if you haven't. Um, but we'll be monitoring the situations of, of other possibles um, as the day goes on today and tomorrow. You mentioned before, I think it was a point after the first five games last time in the first three Premier League games, it was defeats, hopefully not the same start by the end of this weekend. What do you put that down to? How difficult is it? Is it because the window's still open? There's still changes? Is it pre-season? No, we just we haven't performed well enough in the games. You know, we've we've had patches when we could have we could have been in front and we should have been in front, but we didn't take them chances, and that was a bit like last year. But we haven't we haven't seen games through properly. Um, there's no uh, there's no passing the buck on that. You know, our performances have to be for 97 minutes or 93 or 97 whatever they play nowadays. We know we have to be on on our performance levels all of the time. That's what the Premier League insists upon. We have played two very strong sides, you know, a couple of sides who not only were strong in the first place, I think Brighton spent 200 million and uh, Tottenham spent 140 or something like that. And they're already strong sides. So it doesn't guarantee they win, by the way. I mean, we've proved that. We've played strong sides since I've been here and beat them. But I would say they've enhanced their, their capabilities and their possibilities by spending that amount of money. Um, we've spent our own bit and we're trying to challenge our players to keep rising, the players who have been here and the new players to adapt and, and challenge themselves quickly to go and press us forward as a group. You made changes, obviously, against Doncaster, and it was a it was a great result. Um, and Di, has he done enough to to you know say now we could do I mean, it? In Premier I League? think I think uh, the game played out what I probably expected. You know, I think Tim Tim was very good again, and he's been with us the longest period. Illy a bit a bit like that as well. And I thought he was sharp, particularly second half, and you know coming off the wide area, which he's shown before. And Jasper's going to take a bit more time, it looks like to me, and that was was what my gut feeling was. And Jake as well, learning, you know, what it is, just the nuts and bolts, as I call it, as a centre half in the Premier League. Um, but they're, they're all good players. It's how quickly they can push into the first team. So certainly we've 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 got enough from them to put doubt in our thinking. And when we go right, okay, how can we make this work and make it work better? Of course, that's the challenge. Previously, you've liked to try and loan out some of the younger players in the squad to give them that you know match experience week in week out. Given it is a thin squad, there's still injuries. The likes of Harrison Armstrong, Roman Dixon, I assume they will be staying and won't be looking for. Yeah, that, that's the obvious uh, knock-on effect of not the, with a big squad. You know, you, you can't let all the youngsters go out. You know, we, we saw last season and already this season, there's a lot been on the bench and around it. Um, it's good for their development in one way because they get a feel. It's particularly Harrison, you know, and, and Roman because they're young and they're, they're getting a feel of it, whether they're, whether they're getting on the pitch or not. And Harrison has got on the pitch and obviously Roman playing, so that's good. Um, in the ideal world, yes, they'd be out there playing first-team football, in my opinion, now, because I think they're ready. But in jumping into the Premier League is a different prospect, and you have to have the chance to do that. Um, but, but being around the group is a definite. You know, they've, they've been training with us all the time. They've been in every group, more or less, pre-season and currently. So, yeah, that, they'll stay in for now, and then we'll see what tomorrow brings. Thanks, Julia. We'll go to Rob at Five Live. Um, <coughs> Sean, you've spoken about obviously the importance of experience at a high pressure time like this. Just wonder if you got a little kind of glimpse midweek and how exciting is it to maybe think about what that freshness of new players can do in the Premier League and how yeah. that can maybe lift things. Yeah, fre freshness can change a group, but they've got to change the group on the pitch. You know, they can change it in the training area and the feel and new voices and different characters, but it's on the pitch performances that are really key. And are you seeing that? In training I'm already. seeing patches of it, yeah. I'm seeing players who are beginning to get a feel for what it is. You know, these players are good players, as I've suggested, but they're, they're not all necessarily just Premier League ready players. They're, it's a whole different ball game. You know, I've been Premier League manager for what I think is coming up, I think it's 10 years this year, actually. So 
The one thing I've learned is it's very rare that players literally you just throw them on the pitch and they just rip it up. And usually if they do, they've cost a heck of a lot of money. So we've got very good players, I think, and we've got these younger players developing and the new players in who are young in their Premier League age, not in physical age. 23, 24 is a decent age for a footballer. What I mean is in your Premier League learning. And that's no disrespect from the leagues they've come from. It's just a different league. You know, I've spoken to managers from all over the world in my 10 years in, in the Premier League, and they'll tell you it's very difficult for players to just literally grip the Premier League and get it working straight away, um, unless they're obviously of a certain ilk and a certain level of the market. Just wanted to ask you about Kieran Trippier. Nothing to do with transfers, but just as a it's player. It's my favourite, similar to that. <laughs> told the world, told him for years. Well, you said it there. I mean, he's retired from international football um, today. I just wonder from where he started and where you saw him to where he is now. Is I couldn't be more proud of him for what he's done. There, yeah. You know, he's, he's worked hard at his game. He's, he's looked after himself. He's still a fine player. Um, fantastic for club and country when, when called upon. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's one who, who I think has been a joy to work with, a joy to watch. Um, and I hope he continues doing that, although not for the international scene, but I'm sure um, everyone will think he's done very well for England, as well as his clubs as well. Thanks, Rob. We'll go to Will. <coughs> Sean, you mentioned the knock-on effects of a small squad. You've only got one senior recognised left back in Vitaly Michalenko. Is that just sign of the times? Really, you've got to make do with what you have. Or would you yeah, I mean, you know, we, we we had to look at the group, and and you've only got so much uh, um, money you can physically put into a team and a side, and you know, it's not for the want to try him, but it's who's available, who's available at the right levels, you know, and it makes it very difficult. You said last week that any offers you'd have to look at when it comes into Dominic Calvert Lewin. Well, the club will. I won't. Trust me, I'll be going. Please don't offer that. Um, but the club will have to look at it. Have there been any offers for him? Have you held nope. any talks with Dominic about his future? Is the contract still on the table for nope. him? No, we're just, uh, Karen, as we always have done with, with Dom and all the other players, trying to stay open with our dialogue. That's it.